and then when we turn the machine on, we'll get a reading to see how many amps that it's pulling. Good morning, everybody. We're the P-Series guys, and we're back to do another video on maintenance for the P2-Series roasters. Wait a minute, Ken. Our titles are in the wrong place. That's better, Ken. So, I have a question. What is the most common problem for somebody out there with a roaster that has had it for maybe, let's say, over a couple of years? The most common problem that we see, Charlie, is a wire coming loose. So, the, with the roasters, you know, the drum is rotating, there's beans in there, there's vibration. So over a period of time, some of these roasters have been in the field for 10, 20 years. Uh, a wire can come loose or the vibration might cause one of the mechanical parts to fail. Very true. So what instruments or, or what tools should they have to be able to accomplish this efficiently in a short period of time? The most important tools to have is a voltmeter. So we're going to check voltage in a couple of different spots. And then, simple tools, but important, we need to have uh, a couple of screwdrivers so that we can check to make sure wires are tight. And uh, this is a control screwdriver, so this is a small one, which you might have to use to reinstall a wire into one of the uh, PLC carts. Okay. So the other thing that I've always asked me is uh, about how do you check the amps or how much current is going to the motor or is pulling, what, what would they need to do? If we've had a motor overload or a circuit breaker that's tripped, uh, that's a sign that something is pulling too much amps, or pulling too much current. So we'll have an ammeter and we will check to see how much current is flowing through those wires. And that could be because it's a loose wire or it could be because the motor has gone bad or something in the system is shorting out. Okay. So I'm sure we're going to go back out there and show them in real time, which is what I love to do. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's say there's a problem with the machine. So one of the first things that we want to check is to see if any of these circuit breakers have tripped. So these are the circuit breakers for the 24 volt power, uh, which supplies power to the PLC and to the HMI up here. So they've tripped. Uh, we can flip them back up and then see if that solves the problem. If they trip again, then there's a short in the system somewhere and we're going to want to check for loose wires. When we're looking down here at the motor circuit protectors, it says MCP. Uh, this is also something uh, where they could trip. If they've tripped, they'll be in the horizontal position. Uh, if they're good, they're in the vertical position. There's a couple things that could cause these motor circuit protectors to trip. First, if the motor's been in the field for 10 or 20 years, it's possible the motor just went bad. Uh, that would cause uh, the motor to pull too much current and then these circuit protectors would trip. Also, if one of those wires comes loose and it's not making a good connection, then you can get an arc across between the wire and the contact and that will also cause the circuit protector to trip because it's pulling too many amps. So I have a question. Could the contactor go bad, Ken? How, how, do we, how do we figure out if it's this, the unit that's bad, or is it just a loose wire? Well, the first thing we can do is check to see if the motors turn on. So this is an important step in diagnosing where the problem's at. We have a manual contact relay that we can press on these motor circuit protectors to see if the motor turns on or not. When the system is, the power's on, but the system's not running, you can press this black button and that will turn on the motor. So if the motor turns on, then we know the wiring to the motor is good. You can do that for the drum, the roasting fan, the stirrer motor, and the cooling motor. I do know that they have a contactor right here. Could this go bad? You know, yes. From time to time. Yes. So when we're checking for loose wires, we want to check the wires on the top to make sure that they're in there sturdy. We want to check the wires on the bottom. You just pull on them a little bit, make sure that they're in there. But there's also a contactor inside here. So we want to turn the motor circuit protector to the off position. 
and then you can depress this black button and you can pull the cover off and then inside here you'll see these wires so these wires may have come loose or the contactor may have gone bad because they're electrical mechanical parts over time they do wear and it's possible right. that they've gone right. bad okay so if the drum drive motor is pulling too many amps how do I check because this is a cable if I can show it but just for training purposes you can't put anything to check how much not to mention that it's disconnected from the motor right you can get an ammeter so you can see an ammeter will measure amps so it's got a clamp on the top so we can clamp this around one of the wires and we want the wire to be on the inside not not in the clamp itself but on the inside of the clamps so so which wire would that be you can check on either wire on the bottom so this is the below the motor circuit protector we can clamp around the wire and then when we turn the machine on we'll get a reading to see how many amps that it's pulling is there any uh, risk of electric uh, you know getting electrocuted when you're doing this uh, not when you're checking this wire now if those wires are loose then Obviously, that could cause a problem yeah. so when you're checking the wires you want to make sure that the machine is completely off if you've checked the wires and they're tight then you can turn the machine on uh, and check how many amps that it's pulling. Got it. That makes sense. So, is there any other uh, electrical, or does this have to do? Is it tied in with the security of the, of the uh, switch on? We do have some safety checks okay. to make sure that the motor is working properly. Uh, one of the other important tools that we'll want to have is a voltmeter. So this is just a standard voltmeter. You can get them at any hardware store. If you have a voltmeter, if you're an electrician, you can check the, the volt by yourself. If you're not, and you're calling us for support, if you have one of these, we can help you with where to place your probes, what type of voltage you should see. So this is something that you may be able to use yourself, or just having the tool in place when you call in will help us to diagnose the problems more quickly. They can check continuity on this thing, correct? Yes, you can check continuity, make sure make sure your wire is still intact, and uh, and then you can also check to see if the voltage is uh, correct. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe, and as always, leave us comments on what future videos you might want to see.